It's January 28th. We're going to continue our series on fasting and exercise, but the most exciting thing I get to eat today. Let's get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am always so excited that you guys are here with me on Saturday mornings. We have people from all over the world watching. I'm supposed to say a special hello to all the people in Australia. There's a group that I did not realize until I got an email and a picture that uh, a group gets together and watches it together. So hello from down under. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for watching. I didn't realize that we were that much of a hit in Australia, but I, hello, thank you. I appreciate the, the, the kind words. I appreciate the emails. I appreciate the questions. Uh, some of you guys have already had some consults with some of my doctors, including Dr. Devin and, and Dr. Kira and Dr. Sam and Mitch and everybody. Uh, so welcome. Uh, nice to you guys to join us in that kind of venue. It's kind of exciting that uh, something is so simple. When Brandon came to me seven years ago, and we were already a pretty big company that then had clinics all over, said, Uncle Patrick, we need to get you on media. And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's not a joke, guys. I kid you not. I didn't have a Facebook page. I didn't have a YouTube page. I didn't have Instagram. I didn't care. And it was really weird because now I, I kind of I kind of like it. <laughs> so I kind of like it because it just... It gives you a great platform that you have an opportunity to share with information all over the world. So uh, welcome to all you countries that are watching. We thank you guys for treating this. I, I love, you know, it's really funny. Since, you know, uh, you know, I was born in 1974, you know, and when you're a kid, you guys ever remember when you're a kid, uh, you know, we had Saturday morning cartoons. We had three channels. We had two, five, and 11. And we were jacked up on Saturday morning because you had Saturday morning cartoons. Now, basically, with technology, you can watch cartoons all the time. And, but the idea is this. It's like, uh, I love when people that are of my generation saying, I treat this like Saturday morning cartoons. Well, great. Well, I am kind of animated in a way, so I guess that, that just fits right in. <laughs> but some couple things. You didn't have to tell me it was January 28th. I didn't need to look at my computer this morning. Do you know why? Because I get to eat. I do. Uh, Brandon's going to be bringing some, uh, I have not had liver in, what, now 22, 23 days. But like I said, we've been fasting, we've been doing some stuff. It's been pretty incredible. Uh, but people say, Doc, was the fast easy? Heck no. It was horrible in every single way. Uh, was it beneficial? Absolutely. Uh, now he taught me some wonderful things on just even discipline alone. But, you know, you know it's, 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 it's hard enough trying to eat healthy. Now, Try not to eat. That's even more difficult. It takes a lot of things. And um, it's kind of funny because as I shared the experience through people, you'd be surprised the comments that you got from both men and women. And it was kind of neat that we actually started to do uh, uh, the topic on fasting and weight loss and things like that. Because everybody, you know, can take some information from it and make their life better, including fasting. And that's why last week, um, last week, like I said, I even, you know, I even prepare because doing this for now for some years, you know, you could, you could have something that literally cured cancer and there'd be somebody on social media that just hated it. Do you know what I'm saying? You could, you could cure, you know, you could get rid of all world hunger and um, there would be somebody that would complain about it. So that's why I tell people, I, I had people reach out to me last night because I was traveling back from, from uh, uh, Indiana yesterday and I had uh, a person reach out to me and said, how do you handle the criticism that comes with being on media? I'm like, you guys know this. There's somebody that uh, that if it's uh, if it's sunny out, there's a problem. It's too hot. If it's cloudy out, it's too cold. If it rains, it's too wet. If it's it's too sunny, it's too dry. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of funny. It's like guys, it's okay. That's just people by nature. Just uh, smile and wave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's pretty fun. So speaking of that, as I was traveling, I actually can see from right here. I did a speaking event yesterday. Um, in that beautiful pavilion. Uh, that's only one smart, but it's called a Coliseum. Uh, I was down in Shipshawana, Indiana, and that's just one of the booth demonstrations they had. They had two other large sections in there. But I, I took a picture of that from up in the top part of the, that part of the Coliseum because uh, they hold rodeos and they hold you know, other things there. And it was kind of neat because they had speakers all day. 
And it was kind of funny because one thing about it is, you know, they had speakers all day and they had events all day and they had multiple, there was about 10,000 people there. And it was great because all of a sudden, you know, there's like 20 people in each talk and then all of a sudden I got there and the room was packed and standing room only. It was kind of exciting because of the information we had. But this is the second year I've been there. Last year I spoke on hormones. This year I spoke on the immune system. Yeah, you're right. And no joke, I haven't been out speaking for a while. So it was kind of a neat little travel. Dr. Jordan and I went down over there and uh, visited. We have an office in the Shipshwana area. So if you're from there, uh, you can go see uh, Andrew over there and a the wonderful team. We spent some wonderful time over there. But I had the opportunity because they asked me to come back and I spoke to a ton of Amish people. And it's great because there's some myths about Amish people that people know. I always kind of find it funny because I've had to take care of the Amish for almost my whole career. But um, I always love to say, man, they eat perfect and they don't vaccinate. I'm like, what communities have you been going to? They eat horribly and they vaccinate like crazy. Uh, I gotta tell you, I got a funny story about that because the first time I ever went down to down in that area, which there's just a, about 20 miles north of Shipshwana, there was another community that I went to a long time, about 15 years ago. And it was interesting and I was doing a talk. And I was talking about you guys used to farm without pesticides and you guys never vaccinated your, your, your kids and things like that. And I literally had a guy in the community who was an elder of their church and everything said to me because I spoke at the venue and he said, and I said, so why did you change based on your historical premises? And he's like, well, we wanted to keep up to the times. Well, you know me, I kind of get myself in trouble. So I say some funny stuff. I pointed out to the parking lot and I said, you have freaking horse and buggy out there and you're trying to keep up with the times? You know, and that's what happened. They all started busting out laughing. And I'm like, whew, okay, they're gonna allow me to come back. But the idea was this, it was like, oh my goodness. Um, so that's why I kind of, interesting. and they're just as unhealthy as other communities. Now, do they use drugs less? Yes, they do, they do, there is no doubt. They have, they want to use less medication and stuff. So then when I came and spoke there, it was great. But you know what's really funny? I, I said something to them that struck them and I had a woman that came up to me. Uh, she had 14 children and she's 40 years old. Uh, God bless her. And, uh, but it was kind of funny because she said, she said it was kind of interesting because I said a statement and this is kind of, kind of very common, it surprises people. You know, people say, Doc, are you happy that natural medicine seems to have more of an impact? I'm like, it doesn't have more of an impact. She's like, what? And I've said this before. Just think about this. We have more medical procedures ever in history and people get sicker every year. But guess what guys? Due to Amazon shipping, different discoveries of different plants in different countries, we have more ability, more ability to have natural products ever in history. And we're still sicker than ever. Because it doesn't matter if you use a drug or use an herb, if this does not change up here and the thinking and th thought process and application of it, nothing changes. You're just using a different product. That's why if you think of it this way, it's called medicine and alternative medicine. They're really the same thinking just with different products. And I've always said, that's why I've always said the Wellness Way is not natural medicine. Will it use certain things that seem like natural medicine? Absolutely. But it's the thinking that separates. It's the what? The perspective. You understand? So that being said, speaking of perspective, go to our newsletter, I wonderful time. And for you guys that do not know, um, we have the best investigative journalist on the planet. And she even knew I was going to do this, but Aaron, get your butt up here. Aaron's going to come up here. She's our lead investigative journalist. And, um, and just to let you guys know, well, before we do that, uh, I was going to say, scroll the newsletter. Sorry about that, uh, that Travis. Uh, the newsletter, scroll down, put your name in the bottom. We've got a wonderful thing. So guys, this is Aaron. Uh, all this, I, always, I always jump on morning and I read our newsletter and stuff like that. And Aaron is, the, uh, is one of the people, uh, the biggest, um, author of our I Disagree book that has become an international bestseller. So good morning, Aaron. Good morning. And so when you look, move, move in a little closer. There you go, there you go, camera there. So her husband, Christian also works here. He is mm -hmm. an amazing man, been a friend of mine for a while. But so these, they, had, they started Patience 17 years ago, was it? Yep, 17 and 17 a half. 17 and a half years ago. So they have been close to us for a long period of time. And, um, but the book that became an international bestseller, she just watched what we do. She knows to speak our language. It's a big part of her life. Mm -hmm. Um, two of her daughters still work with us too mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So Lauren and Marina are here and stuff and uh, it's kind of great. So it's a big family affair when it comes to Christian being here, Aaron being here, Lauren and Marina, and they also have another child. So they have three kids and it's pretty awesome. So thanks for all the great hard work. Thanks for that newsletter that I get to do today. So if you see those great articles, that's one of the, our lead journalists that do it. So appreciate it. Appreciate so, you. Thank you. 
Yeah, but it's kind of cool. Like I said, we have the most amazing team. And so, of course, they're always putting great things together. So, speaking about amazing team, do me a favor, go to the website, thewellnessway.com, and the greatest thing that you can do is click to that top right, right there, that find a clinic button, as we have more offices and more doctors. Um, I was just very excited, speaking of Christian Walton and Travis Frisk, uh, they were talking about, uh, they handle all of our new offices coming on board, and also new people coming on board all the time. Uh, when it comes to patients that want to, they'll reach out to one of the wellness ways and want to come to an office. But you get to see all those wonderful doctors, including, you know, people from West Coast as far as, you know, Dr. Thor in California or even Dr. Alex and Samson family out in Montana and obviously other places out West and also as far East as, um, well, I can't say New York, even though, do you know we have a huge following in New York, especially since I got interviewed on that rabbi show. But do you understand that New York laws, not only is it create the state crazy, but their laws for people for, for us to practice, I don't ever see us having a clinic there. So it's kind of crazy how that is that way. So that being said, we have our wonderful find the clinic things everywhere. And they have amazing docs that are trained in all the stuff that we are constantly doing. So next part, we are on our last week of weight loss. As you can see there, we are on the last part of it that, that we can now, we are moving into, I think, next week, uh, our thyroid series, correct? Yes, our thyroid series, which once again, obviously all these things as we separate our months apart, talking about weight loss, talking about thyroid, talking about mental health, talking about sugar, guess what? They all interact. They're, think of your, I've always taught you guys, your body's like a Swiss watch. They interact, con, they're all connected. One gear can't be separated to another. So as we kind of learn from all these series, they build upon each other. Now, does the thyroid have a major contributing uh, factor when it comes to weight loss? Absolutely it does. That's why we decided to do the thyroid. But thyroid can also contribute to many other conditions and things that are suffering. I'm going to show you some of the most depleted nutrients and some of the major factors that lead to having Hashimoto's, which is one of the major, is actually the majority of low thyroid problems. But there's things like Graves and some other things going on. And you can just have hypothyroid itself. We're going to distinguish all those. So that's why as we enter and end, you know, our weight loss series, which we're going to do today, but it really doesn't end. You say, you have a good thyroid, uh, you have a chance of losing weight. You have a bad thyroid, you have a chance of gaining weight. But regardless of it, we are going to have continuing things that we're doing. And we are almost at the end of our no sugar challenge. Um, we're going to cover that more at the end because remember, now when I talked about no sugar for, for people when they started this way, there's been mixed results on many things. I covered last week where I had a wonderful woman who said, man, I went 19 days and I gained weight. Well, if you understood last week's fasting and if your cortisol levels are elevated and you start dropping no sugar, your cortisol levels can go up higher and you can literally gain weight. See, it should show you that when you make some changes, if you ever make some changes, even positive changes, because on the flip side, drunk, probably 98% of all the comments on no sugar have been dramatically good for both men and women uh, because people eat too much sugar. Do I eat too much sugar? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. I've never lied about that. I'm like, uh, if it's up to me, you know, I would eat sugar all day long. I have a Zevia right here. You know, why? Because it's what, eight o'clock in the morning, in most places. And guess what? I want something sweet already, you know? But once again, and people say, well, Doc, but wait, if you had like a piece of bread, you had the healthiest organic gluten-free bread on the planet. Of course you did, but it doesn't mean that's not sugar. You know, I was with the Amish yesterday and it was kind of funny because they love bread. I mean, they love bread. I mean, they make their bread. They're just like obsessed with it. And they asked me about this new bread that the way they're processing it, it it's called, and it's really funny. I have to say this because I did take off the Christian community. Now, let me very, say this. When, I, when I'm a little bit tough on the Christian community, it doesn't mean I don't consider myself a Christian. I love Jesus. Uh, I believe in the Holy Trinity. The rest is debatable to me, okay? So it's like, that's why I tell you, there's always two pastors that will say the opposite thing, reading the same Bible. So I'm just like, I believe in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The rest is, the rest is debatable. So it's kind of, I kind of frustrated the Christian community when I said, uh, you know, Ezekiel bread is just really good Christian bullshit marketing. Do you understand? Which it really is. Uh, because once again, it's just, they throw a bunch of Bible verses on the outside of the packaging. People go, oh, it must be God's bread. And so therefore I eat it. Uh, I'm going to be healthier. No, you keep eating that bread. You're going to meet Jesus earlier. You understand? Because it's going to raise your sugar levels. It's going <laughs> to slow down and it's going to cause you to oxidative stress and cause a bunch of our problems and you're going to meet Jesus early. That's what I meant by that. Now, once again, I'm using humor, but a little bit of truth too. 
okay? So I was sitting in the office committee, and I was really, and, and there's, a, there's a couple that I've been taking care of for 15 and a half years. Um, now, once again, Dr. Jordan now sees that, but it was, it was kind of exciting because we went over there just to visit, and there was this um, young lady, her name was Ashley. Uh, she was a young lady who was suffering from infertility. Uh, she was in her later 20s by the time that we met her. And um, it was great because she came over because we were over at the two people that we started with them about 15 and a half years ago. And she came over, she knew we were coming to visit, but she had to see Dr. Jordan and had to see me because you know why? She wanted us to hold and take a picture with her newborn baby because imagine this. When you're Amish, man, no, no joke. You basically get married and start having kids right away. She got married at a very young age and she went seven, eight years with infertility. And that to anybody is mentally devastating, especially for Amish, because they start popping kids out at 19, 20 years old like crazy, which is fantastic, because they usually get married at 18, they start doing it, and all the next thing you know, it's like, uh, no children, you get about 26, 27 years old, you should see the mental um, anxiety and anguish it causes a woman thinking that, especially being in an Amish community, that you're not having a bunch of kids. Sometimes at 26 years old, they have three or four kids, if not more, and stuff. I had a patient one time, she was 32 years old, and she had 14 kids. I'm like, holy mackerel. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a baby-making machine right there. So um, God bless that woman right there, all right? But long story short, it was great going over there. But the person that, that the reason why I even started taking care of that uh, family 15 and a half years ago was because their son had bleeding eczema from head to toe, head to toe. Now, Durang, they took a train over to Chicago and a bus up to Green Bay to come see me because back then I was strictly in Green Bay. I was in full-time practice. I worked five days a week, uh, sometimes, no joke, sometimes seven days a week when I first started. And even, you know, uh, by that time I was probably eight or nine years of practice, so I was still full-time practice. I didn't travel much. That's why I kind of giggle when people say, ah, oh, man, doc, you're in Green Bay. They're Amish. They jumped on a bus and a train. Don't tell me you can't get to some place you want, you want help. But it was interesting. This is, the, this is I, I have the labs to, to show you this. Um, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm like bleeding eczema, head to toe. The kid had to wear full pajamas, and his pillow was bloody in the morning because he bled. And he be, actually became anemic because he bled every day. His skin, literally, you couldn't see a normal part of his skin. Uh, some of you guys have seen the pictures. I apologize and plan telling the story, but I, I should have popped it up for you. But I can honestly tell you, it was devastating. I know I have my computer. I could probably pop it up. But it was interesting because he bled from head to toe, and the parents were like, oh, my goodness, we got to do something. Now, I know it sounds funny. If you have a skin issue, this is, I'm gonna generalize this, but just understand, if you have a skin issue, you have an immune issue. There you go. So once again, I don't care if you have, if you have uh, acne, I don't care if you have eczema, I don't care if you have uh, uh, any kind of in, thing on the skin, you have an immune issue. Now, drone, the immune issue can come from hormones. The immune issue can come from, um, can come from uh, infection. The immune issue can come from multiple factors. To give me an example, no joke, it is right here. I mean, he bled. He bled from head to toe. And you can see next to him, his lab. His lab. Because I was like, all right, not only do I believe that he had infections, which he did, he had a stool test done, and there he had some infections. But that wasn't his major problem. That's what's going to floor people. That wasn't his major problem. Do you know what his number one problem was? He was allergic to horses. Think about that, man. That'd be like, I have my beautiful you know, SUV outside, and let's say every time I got into it, I swelled up. Do you understand? Man. Now imagine this, guys. Here's some of the advice I had to get. Well, Doc, you know, if you, um, if you have an egg allergy, um, what you need to do is you need to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, you do. So here's what happens. Now remember, they're farmers. Do you know what they do for a living? They raise horses and sell them. Not a joke. I was at their, I was at their farm yesterday. Went out, petted the horses. Man, they got some massive horses too. They're huge and stuff. And they have about 70 of them. And it was kind of great. 70 of them yesterday was kind of neat well, seeing that horse farm as always. And, and then they have some cows. They raise for beef and everything. But I just petting the animals. It was, it was fantastic. But it was interesting. So imagine, and, and then even the mom says to me, you know something? You know, we even open the windows during the summer. He seems to flare up. So I had to give them advice to avoid the horses. But if you open the windows, guess what? 
So we had to, and this is not a joke, as we started to change the inside, so now that when he came in contact with the horses, there wasn't such a big reaction, I said, listen, the best thing you can do is move him away from you, move him away from the house. And they had an aunt who was literally down the road a little bit, who, who left the Amish community, and so they had vehicles and things like that, and he stayed there for a while. So imagine, you talk about me giving you bad advice, saying, here, take this or do this, avoid this food. My advice for that family was, move your son out of the house. No joke. And so you can see he was about two years old. Now he's 17 and a half years old, and it was kind of great. And it's kind of funny because I was talking to his mother and dad yesterday. He was off uh, at work. And I said, how's that young man doing? He goes, he says, you want some doc? He goes, I can always tell when he's sassy because what he'll do is he will eat things he's not supposed to and his skin will flare up right here. So his mom, it's almost like the alarm system comes on and his mom doesn't have to ask him if he's doing the right things. His body yells at him. He's lucky enough. Most of us don't have that kind of alarm system. If you look at cardiovascular disease, which still dominates in both men and women, do you know in 70% of the males, do you know what the number one symptom is that you, ha that you have heart disease is? Death. Death. Charlie never had a sick day in his life. All of a sudden, he dropped dead heart attack. He was just at the doctor, and he had a clean bill of health, and he's dead. Because symptomatology-wise, people do not realize this. Does anybody know what the number one symptom for 80% of gallstones is? Does anybody know what the number one symptom is? This new stat just came out. I just read the research article on the ride. I wasn't driving. Doug Jordan was. There is no symptom. Zero. 80% of gallstones have zero symptoms. And by the time they find them, like, oh my goodness, I have full gallstone, they got to take a gallbladder. 80% is zero symptomatology. So that's why people tell me, oh, I feel great. I'm like, well, let me see your labs. Let me see your scans. You know, well, I'm, I'm fit. And therefore, you know, I feel great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> let me see your labs which leads us into some of the things we're going to talk about today. But that being said, as we continue, no sugar. We continue no sugar for the next three days. Don't forget, follow me on Instagram. Um, we, I go live every day about it that way. We actually have our reels come out about it. It's been kind of fun. Uh, and once again, it's been kind of great because we have been gathering and continue. I cannot believe the growth of our Instagram on a regular basis, but I want to thank our team continuing to put uh, the good stuff and videos and clips from out there and all the things that we're doing. So to our topic that seemed to frustrate so many people last week. I said, I had love and I had hate from it that way. <laughs> but guys, when you do something on media, understand there's going to be love and hate in everybody. Do you know what's really funny? I always said this. Do you know this is not a joke? Just in general. This is just humans in general. Do you understand that you can meet somebody that's super nice and, and you could have great experience with them and someone doesn't like them? Do you understand now sitting across from me right now, Let's be totally honest with each other, okay? I want you to think about this. Do you like everybody that you meet? I don't like most people that I meet. I hate most people. Do you say what I'm It's kind of funny, everybody, you know, at least I'm honest about it. I'm like, I don't like you. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm very particular. Now, they're wrong. Uh, the people I hang around with, I absolutely love and adore. Um, but that's why I don't hang out with a lot of people. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, actually, people have said this to me. Doc, um, um, you have a huge company. Uh, do you like everyone in your company? No. I don't have to like you to do really good work with you. I just got to tolerate you. And you have to tolerate me. We can have a great relationship. I guarantee there's more people that tolerate me than like me. And I'm okay with that. I've never had a problem with that. But here's the point. When you, when you go out and put information out and do certain things, it's okay. You're going to get some love and going to get some hate. You know, I've always said this though. I don't know why, because you know, I, I recently with the challenge and everything that we're doing that way, for some reason, a bunch of soy boys have been following us. You know, you know, the guys who would have their soy milk latte and their mama tell them they're special, and if they if they change any of their emotions, they're they're freaking out. And, and it's like, and then they just have to be critical that way. It's like going, and, and I love Mike Tyson's, I love Mike Tyson's quote. Guys, this is great. I do love this. Social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. There's a lot of soy boys out there. There's a lot of soy girls out there. And guess what happens? They become very strong when they know they won't get punched in the face. Don't confuse my kindness with weakness. I'm even very kind to everybody. But once again, 
disrespect should never be allowed to anybody that way. And there'll be disrespectful people, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's funny. So that's why I tell people, people get very, very comfortable with being a, a soy boy or a soy girl sitting behind a keyboard. You know what I'm saying? But I really need to need it nicely. What impact are they having on people's lives? Mostly they're not. They're just bitter, angry people, and that's okay. You should have more sympathy and empathy for them than anything else because their mama has always told them that they're special and most of you guys are not. So join it, you know what I'm saying? I always tell people, if a man has something to say to me, say it to my face. And you might get punched in the face if it's disrespectful. It's really funny. Yeah, I know. Remember, masculine trait and stuff. Can't speak like that anymore. You're promoting violence. Uh, you know, most people, you know, most the reason why people don't do bad things is sometimes because of violence. You know what I'm saying? See, but when you sit behind a keyboard, it's kind of funny. So I literally, I kid you not, this week I had so many people reach out and go, man, people are just mean. I'm like, it's okay. They sit behind a computer and say so. So I'm telling all you guys, everyone you guys, share your thoughts. Be respectful for everybody that way. But if somebody says something negative, just, you know, write it off. Because once again, let them enjoy their soy latte and their small testicles as they sit behind a computer and do nothing. And actually their mom, they, all they have to do is call their mom and the mom will tell them that they're awesome and special. And then they will do nothing in this world. So that being said, let's get into our wonderful perspective. All right, here we go. We're gonna continue some of the things that we talked about when it came to fasting, as you can see from our wonderful picture here, fasting, workouts, what's a woman to do? We chatted a lot about last week and I wanna thank you for all of the hundreds, I'm not joking, hundreds of thousands of messages. I had literally almost over a million responses to our show last week about this because, they, and here was the major thing, Doc, it made so much sense. See, that's it. When I put the theory out, and once again, can I prove it? Yep. Can we clinically apply it to make people's lives better? Yep. When I put out saying, listen, women need to sleep eight to 10 hours per day. Now, once again, has anybody studied that, studied that? Nope. Nope. People say, what's your research to prove it? Well, let's just walk through how the human body works. You know, if we look at just from my standpoint and my clinical experience, if women get to bed around nine o'clock and they start to build up some hormonal reserves, and therefore, they have more fuel in the tank than when they awake. Well, if you look at the cortisol rhythm as we did last week or even before that, it really peaks around seven to eight. I've seen seven, I've seen eight o'clock, so let's give it a little flexibility. Well, if you went to bed around nine o'clock and you slept till seven o'clock, how many hours is that of sleep? 10, okay. Now, once again, men don't have to worry about hormonal reserves. Me and Dr. Evie and Dr. Lucas, and Dr. Ryan and Travis, guess what happens? We need a, some, we're gonna get some testicular production pretty easily that way. We can produce it a snap of a dime. If I go and attack EB right now, guess what happens? His testosterone's gonna jump up just from production. Don't have to worry about hormonal storage is that way. So that's why I said, yeah, women are gonna need a little bit more. And then we started to apply it clinically to hundreds of thousands of women. So here's the one thing. So when everybody's critical of our material, I'll say, okay, listen, I'm cool with any perspective you have. I've just been applying it clinically for 24 years. What's your data? Um, I read an article and I got a degree. Okay, have you applied it to people across the world? Well, no. Okay, I have. You know, we've been in practice for so long and have taken care of millions of people. We, we have made it applicable. So that's why I talk about fasting. You know, and I, and I, and I proved to everybody last week that, remember, if you have cortisol levels that skyrocket, you're gonna affect your hormone levels. So I'm not saying that a person can't fast. It's just that when it comes to women, there is a window of opportunity. You know, so if I looked at what I would have women do if their, if their circadian rhythm was normal, a good 18-6, I think is a wonderful time. Starting at two, get down about eight. Ladies, pound down your high dense nutrient foods that way. You can do wonderful. On the flip side, there's women that can't do that based on their cortisol levels. It's gonna mess them up. So therefore, it's on an individualized basis. There's no two people that are same. So when you give you some generalized statements, I mean, listen, once you get tested, it really allows you to really individualize what that woman needs. On the flip side, same thing happened with fasting, same thing happened with when it comes to exercise. So I'm gonna put this slide up again. You have to get rid of all of your religious backgrounds because no joke, 
I don't know why, and people know this. I, 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 like I said, I've made it very clear about my religious beliefs, uh, being a Christian person, but I actually had literally 100 messages last week from Muslims saying, well, Doc, our religion said this. I'm like, cool, cool. I don't want to step on the toes of anybody's religion. I have my beliefs. You can have yours. We can even differ. Uh, even when, I, when, when the wonderful rabbi, which once again, thank you for all you guys from New York that seemed to really love my interview, uh, that when the rabbi interviewed me. Um, but we have a little different perspective on how we're going to enter the pearly gates. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm cool with that. But the idea is this. You have to get rid of all this when you look at this because I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care. You know what's really funny? No matter what your religion is, the body still works the same way. You know what I'm saying? How you get to the pearly gates you know, it's up to, up to, is up to you. But I'm saying no matter, on this earth right now, I don't care what you believe. I don't care who your God is. I don't care who your, who your master is. I don't care what happens. The idea is this. If, if, if you're Jewish and you're Muslim and you're a Christian, guess what happens? Your physiology still works the same. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get rid of the, the religious aspect. And, and I'm deeply a person of faith that way. So long story short, let's get into this a little bit. And I love this. Let's, let's read this again slowly together. Now, the reason I say slowly has nothing to do with you. Sometimes I speak very fast. So here we go. Fasting is a physiological stressor like anything else your body may come across. It creates a similar effect of the body as exercise, screaming at others, running from predators, or being anxious. So therefore, if we look at fasting itself, they even correlate it, that it's going to produce a certain amount of stress to your body. Now, once again, here's what happens. Your body needs a certain level of stress. It's just that in today's world, you know, I said this yesterday to the Amish women. I said, ladies, I said, at least being Amish, you guys have no stress. They all, exactly. They all started laughing like, they're like, uh-huh, doc, you know, Sam, because we know this. And that's what I've always tried to say, listen, um, and I don't care about your religious beliefs. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care if you're a woke, you know, liberal. I don't care what happens. That's a religion itself right there. But the idea is this. I believe that, and I can prove it scientifically, that women's bodies aren't meant to handle the amount of stress as men's bodies. That's why by nature, we are protectors. And so when I say something, I'm actually trying to protect women. I'm trying to protect women from that stress that can lead to massive illness. Because regardless if you are Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Amish, no matter what it is that way, you know what everybody has in common? They're all sick. And you'd be surprised that those stressors contribute to it that way. So that when we did things about fasting, you see, I went through this graph last week and I went out in detail that way. But I do like the fact between 18 and 24 hours, there's that key thing of autophagy. And remember, you start depleting the, the liver glycogen and everything. And it does a great thing. So even by doing no sugar, we're depleting the liver glycogen, and that's one of the positive things that come about. But like I wanted to also show you guys is the idea of fasting is when you're eating in a window every single day, it's really time restrictions, not fasting. Fasting has always been based on a 24 or longer period of not eating anything. So therefore, intermittently means from our actually religious standpoint, intermittently we'd fast based on some season, things like that, and, or Easter or different ones, but you intermittently did it means every once in a while through the year. It wasn't mean daily that way. So, and the one thing that I can honestly say, I think fasting can do some amazing things. If you look, let's go through it. Fasting does a wonderful job and a great job for lowering blood sugar, insulin, and inflammation. But, but, and there's the key, it's not going to lower cortisol. Quite, it, it quite does the opposite. Now, what do I mean? Now, remember, we have certain rhythms. Now, Travis, we're going to come back to this one over here. All right? We have certain rhythms. This is just a normal pattern for every human on the planet. Let me explain that. If you think about this, guys, it is actually something that every person, both male and female, does. We have a circadian rhythm. And last week, I can honestly tell you, after I covered this, I had so many, both men and women, reach out to me saying, Doc, I work the night shift. And it throws me off. Well, of course it does. Because biologically, your body wants to have this normal circadian rhythm. Cortisol levels get very elevated in the morning. They drop down, get really low at night, build up your hormone reserves, and they start slowly coming up. It looks like it's a steep climb up because they're shortening the hours. But the idea is there's that rhythm that comes about. And I've had women say, you know, when I started working night shift, it seems like my health fell apart. That is true. It does happen because you're working against your normal rhythm. Vice versa. This is, it's not just sleep that can be affected. 
your hormonal system can get affected and cortisol doesn't, it can throw off your body because if cortisol is high when it's not supposed to be, it can be bad. But if cortisol is low when it's supposed to be high, that can be bad too. See, there's times that it's supposed to be elevated and times it's not. So if you look at this person that I have here, this person had that cortisol rhythm and it's elevated at night. It's elevated at night. And she wonders why she has a hard time sleeping. But no joke, she had some pretty good rhythm and then all of a sudden got nighttime and this was her toughest time. So we had to bring that down. So I gave you 11 things last week that you could do in order to you know, bring that down. Now, once again, I love these kind of messages that I got over the last week. Doc, those 11 things worked. Well, of course they do. They're, they're supporting the normal physiology for body to calm down. Does anybody know? I didn't shower this morning, but does anybody know what I did this morning? First thing, got up, went to my bathroom, ran some cold water, dipped my face in it. I was doing the mammalian diver reflex. It's a normal part of my thing. Now I say, well, doc, did you wake up, you know, stress or anything? No, I didn't wake up stress. I just want, it actually slows your heart rate. It calms it down. It actually, it refreshes you. Um, so I, and it's cold water, you know, and that's a great thing. It's wonderful. And then what I did is I threw on some clothes and I walked outside and I stood in the cold. You know, once again, I stood outside because it was very cold this morning and ah, refreshing. Then I got up and Dr. Jordan stayed over last night, got him up, sent him on his way, and I came into the studio and started to work. But the idea is this, it came in very calming, peaceful, and it's interesting because the sun was not up yet. And then Travis came in about what, 6, 6 15 or so that way? And but it's gonna sound funny, I actually work in the dark. Because you know why? Sun's not up. So I just wanted to support my circadian rhythm. So I worked in the dark. And see, I kept everything very dark, even when I get up in the morning. I, when I get up in the morning and the sun is not out yet, I keep the lights off. Wait, Doc, you shower in dark? Sure, why not? Do you understand? And it's like, you know, I can still shave and do everything in the dark, you know? Um, trust me, it keeps it nice and silky smooth, all right? So I haven't nicked myself yet. You see no toilet paper anywhere. But anyways, um, the idea is this, and, and I'm trying to work with that circadian rhythm. I don't want to throw it off. You know, it's, it's a, even like last night, I didn't, I didn't get home till late because I had to travel and it, it worried me a little bit because I'm going to probably take a little bit of nap, uh, just because I didn't get home till later, didn't go to bed later. And I like to go to bed between nine and 10. So I had to compensate for me being sassy. Now, what I mean by sassy, my body doesn't care if I was speaking and doing good things. Do you know that? My body did not care that I had stuff to do. It says my hormone rhythm is going to come down, so you need to follow what I'm telling you to do. That's, and so I get this, and I mean this sincerely. I know you have a great job by working third shift, but my concern isn't that. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be concerned with it. My advice has to be given to you based on my stuff, do you understand? which is just looking at the health of your human body. I get it. You have to work. I'm all for that. But so... Some advice and some things they talk about are difficult sometimes, all right? So like I said, when you see those things, it's important to understand that the circadian rhythm can be affected and even affected me. Now, I have to compensate and I'm going to have to take a little cat nap today. Probably lay down for a couple hours, but I won't do it. I won't do it until I get past roughly that 2 o'clock. And then, once again, I'll, I'll do a little, little nap. I'll feel refreshed because it'll calm me down. But you can do those other calming techniques as I showed you last week. Now, that being said, we talked about something that's quite interesting is we look at cortisol and remember, cortisol is not just produced. I want to talk about that. If you think about this, and that's why it frustrates me. It still frustrates me today that I get these questions every day. Now, it's nothing to do with the people as more to what our current thinking has done to people for a long period of time. Anybody that tells me that cholesterol or LDL is bad, I just, I get very frustrated. And I watch, these, I watch these medical people that put up like uh, people that I know that are putting out good information. And they'll say uh, cholesterol is a scam, LDL is a scam, saying it's bad. And they're actually right. And then these experts are going, well, all these experts said that LDL has a... Do you know, watch this. There is not one research paper that tells you LDL or cholesterol causes heart disease. There's not one research article. Do you know that? There's not one research article. So Lane, all you guys that kiss ass to medical profession, trying to act like you're scientific, it says the risk factors go up. Well, guess what? If I walk across the street, I have a better risk factor of actually getting hit by a car. But if I look both ways and say, is there a car coming? Then they're wrong. I agree. 
I agree with you on this. If triglycerides are elevated, your body has to mobilize cholesterol. So triglycerides can cause some damage to your body if you're elevated. But do you understand that maybe you're eating way too much sugar and your LDL had to get it from one place to another? And so LDL jumps up and the LDL is not the problem? Do you understand? It's your body trying to say, listen, you dummy, stop eating so much sugar. So I have to raise my LDL to get it out there because, and yes, during circulation, this can happen. But see, they act like your body was so stupid and made a mistake and LDL is caught. No. See, it just drives me absolutely nuts. So, because here's why I bring this up. Every, ladies, look at me on this one. And even guys, every hormone, every anabolic hormone, the ones that you're trying to get good at the gym, the ones that you're trying to look good from, the ones that keep your beauty, you need cholesterol in order to produce them. So stop telling me that cholesterol is bad. And in order to get cholesterol, that molecule, triglyceride, to other parts of the body, you need LDL and HDL, not just HDL. So if I say, listen, I cut my finger, I cut my finger, I need repair process. LDL has to go up. It has to. It has to. That's why, once again, the majority of our cholesterol and all of our LDL, you cannot eat LDL. All of our LDL is made by the liver. See, so instead of observing, and, and, and a blood work should be, what is my body saying to you? So when somebody gives me your lab, I'm going, hmm, the body's not going to make a mistake, but you can. You can. And what is your body telling me? And most of the time I look at people's labs saying, it's telling me you're being sassy, knock it off. Do you see him? It's not, body's not trying to create disease for you so you don't live longer. So let's look at this chart real quick, okay? See, if you look at, we talked about cortisol and this whole thing that looks so complicated, it's really not. You need some constituents, you need some ingredients to produce the cake. And cholesterol is your major backbone for all of your steroid hormones. And you need circulating LDL to get it out there. Okay? I apologize. I, I hate this jacket. <laughs> I was cold this morning. And so what I wanted to show you is when you look at that chart, the chart, what it does, it shows you that cholesterol is actually the major backbone for you guys to produce all of your hormones. Every one of you guys that l love testosterone to build up, which I hope it does, you need cholesterol. Therefore, if you think about this, when you work out, you want your cholesterol to go up for a short time because you need to go through repair, you need to go through rehabilitation, you need to go through a testosterone going up to be anabolically stronger. But guess what happens? You have to mobilize cholesterol and actually even mobilize LDL. But let's come back over here. Cortisol right there is a hormone that's converted. And in women, this is so significant compared to guys because here's what happens. You can, you can produce your cortisol from progesterone. It's called 17-hydroxy. It metabolizes and converts that. That's why high amounts of stress, and we talked about significantly, high amounts of things that lead to cortisol elevating can drain your progesterone, can drain it. That means mental stress. That means physical stress when we're going to get to the physical aspect of exercise. So when all these people try to be, you know, I had this one guy um, um, make a you know, side by side reel and say and talk about because I was saying, hey, listen, these CrossFitters are doing stuff that I kind of laughed a little bit. Travis sent to me. And of course, they're disrespectful. Well, he's a soy boy. If he said it to me in front of him, I would have punched him in the face. You say, I'm. Oh, you're promoting violence. No, I'm promoting respect. You say, I'm surprised how uh, soy boys can get behind the computer and be like, under the, like going, yeah, but what impact do you make in the world? Because if I would actually compare my life to yours, I would dominate you. Because you know why? I'm a competitive male and I want to be the best at what we do. So therefore, I kind of laugh at that. Because you know, what I was trying to show, being a protector of women, being a protector of women from people like you that are trying to say CrossFit and exercise for women is so important. I'm going, really? Because let me see the hundreds of thousands of labs that you have 
showing that women that exercise excessively like this have normal hormones. Oh wait, you don't have any. I do. See, and I look at going, so when you're given advice that way, it's bad advice. So make your reels, make your stuff. I'm in the trenches every day saving women's lives. You're actually hurting them. So who really cares about women, me or you? So that being said, if you look at that chart again, Travis popped it up for a second, you can see that progesterone over that left side converts down to cortisol. So therefore, your high cortisol levels are going to drain it. And then, but look at down below, cortisone. They can convert, look at back and forth from each other. They can. So let's go on and let's take a look at this. Progesterone is made from pregnenolone, the mother of all hormones, while pregnenolone is made from cholesterol. There we go. Cortisol is indirectly made from progesterone or more precisely from its metabolite known as 17-hydroxyprogesterone. This makes progesterone an essential precursor to mineral corticoids such as aldosterone and glucocorticoids such as cortisol. When you are exposed to stress, your body increases secretion of cortisol and adrenaline. When this happens, progesterone decreases since it is used to produce cortisol. This makes it more important to control stress response in order to increase progesterone levels because as you increase cortisol, you, increase, you decrease progesterone. But watch this, guys. Cortisol is used to counter hypoglycemia. That's why when women fast, their cortisol levels will go up, and if they're already elevated, you can gain weight. That's why sometimes no sugar took a woman and could make them gain weight because their cortisol levels were already elevated. They had so much stress in their body, it's a bad thing. But watch this. Cortisone is used to counter inflammation. All right. So now, so when I started to give advice when it came to women and exercise, it was based on the fact that this. Now let me, let me say some things in general so it's not taken out of context. Every individual, both male and female, must move every day. Must move every day. Let me say again, must do movement every day. Because when I say that women shouldn't exercise the way they do, especially if they're ex exercising daily, they're saying, well, doc, I just get to sit on the couch during the weeks that you, no, 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 no. No, constant movement is important. Like for example, people say, doc, why don't you sit when you do a show? I can't sit, I don't like to sit. I move constantly. That's why people say, I can't believe you go, 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 go. You think I'm joking? This is not a joke. Brandon will tell you, and Brandon's 29, and all the other young guys are going, I'm 48. They can't keep up. See, even Travis, I can't keep up with this guy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I will outwork you. I will out mental prep you. I will go, 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 go. You know what I'm saying? And yes, sometimes I am a little excessive on things. I've been known to go overboard just a little bit sometimes. But I still never run out of energy. And that's why. It's kind of funny. The guy who made the reel was like trying to make fun of us and I'm like, let's compare it to Sasha levels. I guarantee that, you know, uh, you probably don't have a girlfriend and stuff, you know, because you're a soy boy. But the idea is this, I'll compare my testosterone to anybody's. You say, and I'm not saying there's not people that don't have higher. I'm just saying I'm 48 years old. And guess what? My testosterone is jacked up because I know how to do this stuff. But when it comes to women, we don't want their hormones jacked up like that. We want their testosterone jacked up. We want their hormones low. So when you look at when I talked about cortisol uh, will counteract hypoglycemia, cortisone will counteract inflammation. That's why if you ever notice, if you have high inflammation, they gave you a cortisone shot and it reduces that response. So high inflammatory things during certain times can drain a person's cortisone. It's why they end up giving people cortisone shots because they ran out of their own. So they have to give it to them synthetically. But when that happens, ladies, you have to understand this. It's going to draw from your progesterone. It's going to draw from it. Now, it's interesting because, ah, oh, I apologize. My goodness, I meant to put this on a slide because here's what happens. These are, this is my world every day, and people wonder why I have the opinions the way I have them. I was traveling, and, and actually Dr. Jordan was driving at the time, and I was responding to messages, and here we go. So. I'm going to cover this up because I don't want to share anybody's name. Oop, there we go. But if I were to just share this with you, I'm going to read everybody to you there. Okay? And here's what happens. This wonderful young lady reached out to me. All right? 
here we go. Now remember, this is the world that I have to live in and do every day. And so if you see these things, you would agree with me too. Why is my cycle every other month? I lift weights and run, eat fairly healthy, and I'm 21. Wanting kids and struggling getting a normal cycle. Do you understand? She already gave her problem what was going on right there in the answer. Because, and then I looked at her profile, and once again, I'm gonna cover it up. I'm gonna cover it up there. But here's what happens God, family, and fitness, ISSA, certified strength and conditioning coach. So I'm like going, that's your problem. Now, not that she's a coach, it's just that she's been taught through her stuff that as a woman, she can do this to her body and do wrong. Nothing's gonna, you're gonna be healthy. You're gonna fit. You're, you're, you're fit. And I looked at her pictures and I'm going, guess what? She's fit. And this is the commonality, the commonality. So thank you for all you wonderful women that were even sometimes very critical of my words when I said, listen, you got a six pack, you're gonna be low on hormones. We've already got some of those labs back. And guess what happened? Big surprise, their hormones were low. And I have one woman that got the lab before I did. She said, she goes, doc, oh my goodness, my hormones are low. I started looking up, I'm like, and then they started freaking out. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. And this one woman, because she, when she sent me a long message at first, and I keep all the messages. Remember, if you send me a message, I will tell you this, I keep it because I put it away, because I'm going to remind you, you know what I'm saying? So she kept it, and she was very critical at first. You know, I, I'm healthy, I'm fit, I feel great, I got energy. I'm like, that's cool. Guess what happens? You can take drugs and get energy. You know, you, know, you feel bad? Just eat some marijuana. I guarantee you're going to feel better. All right? You know, just stuff happens, you know? But I'm like, no, no, no. Let's look on the inside. See, because even a 21-year-old goes, I skipped my cycle. And the nice thing about this, and Madrung, and here's what happens. I'm trying to always share my thought process with the world. But let me go on the flip side. I, I'm, I'm empathetic for this woman. I feel for her. I actually hurt for her. Because here's my conversation that we started to have back and forth. And I have to set it up. I say, listen, are you open to me sharing some ideas with you that I encourage you to look up and do because it's going to have to change the world the way you think and look at it. And you're wrong. That's a battle right there. You ever try to change somebody's thinking? They will. Okay, let me give you an example, which I've never done, okay? Let's say all of a sudden that, low once again, because I've had a ton of messages this week, uh, talk about Muslims reaching out, and, and if I were to say something to the Muslim, saying, I want to change your thinking about being a Muslim because I'm a Christian. That can end up in not only a massive fight, but even, you know, war. Do you understand? Just by trying to change some people's thinking. Man, that's why I had to start and say, listen, when you think about uh, nutrition and fitness and exercise and fasting, you have to get rid of all this stuff. Because if you don't, it's going to be a bad day. You know what I'm saying? So I even empathetic going, all right, here we go. 21-year-old, certified, fitness, strength, cool. And I'm not saying she can't be a wonderful certified teacher in fitness and stuff like that. But I'm hoping the ideas I shared with her will change it. And so let's go through some of those ideas to show you that even if you are a woman of fitness, that I believe that if you look this up, it will make sense to you. And now can you thrive in the fitness industry, you can thrive with what you want with your body, but you can also thrive in your health and your hormones and you won't have these kind of problems. Because my empathetic part of this woman is this. She could be fit, she could do everything, she could look great in a bikini, but if she can't have a baby, that'll mentally destroy her more than looking great in a bikini any day of life. So let's go through this. So let's take a look. So there's some basic research. Basic, here we go. Inflammatory, there we go. Because we need cortisone to respond to it. Inflammatory effects of high and moderately intense exercise is systemic review. So let's break it down a little bit that way. We'll talk about the background and then we'll go to the conclusion. And I encourage you, this is just the abstract. Travis, come back to me for a second. So here's what happens. I'm just showing you the abstract. I encourage everybody to read the full article. I will tell you this, I subscribe to many journals. I read them. 
I read a bunch of journals on the way down to um, down to Shipshuana. I drove uh, most of the way back. I drove all the way back. So what happened is uh, I didn't read much because I had to do certain things. But the idea is this, is I like to read constantly, but read the whole things, take it apart, look at these. And so let's go through the, the background. Let's go through the conclusion. Here we go. Exercise leads to a robust inflammatory response. Hold the phone right there. Okay. If it creates an inflammatory response, your body has to respond to it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. See, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because if I come in contact with the virus, I have to go through an inflammatory response. I want my body to inflame. But every time I step on the gas, so um, I like to speed, okay? This is me. It's a major law I break every day, okay? So cops, please don't follow me. You could actually pay your whole budget on my speeding, okay? So here we go. But I want you to think about this. Is I love the speed but it takes more fuel for me to go 90 compared to you go 55. So when you're doing that and you're creating those inflammatory markers, your cortisol goes, I need to be there. I need more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. And that can create an inverse relationship with, with cortisol and, and progesterone. And that's the key that freaks me out because let's go on here. Mainly characterized by the mobilization of leukocytes, part of the immune system, and increases in circulatory inflammatory mediators produced by immune cells and directly for the active muscle tissue. Both positive and negative effects on immune function, our susceptibility to minor illness, have been observed following different training protocols. Okay, so you understand this. When you look at some things that happen when it comes to it, there can be some not only benefits, but there also can be some detrimental things going on. While engaging in moderate activity may enhance immune function above sedentary levels, excessive amounts of prolonged high-intensity exercise may impair immune function. Thus, the aim to present review was to clarify the inflammatory effects in response to different exercise intensities. Let's go down to the conclusion. In summary, intense, long exercise can lead in general to higher levels of inflammatory mediators and thus might increase the risk of injury and chronic inflammation in contrast, moderate exercise or vigorous exercise with appropriate uh, resting periods can achieve maximum benefit. Now, here's what happens. Oh, no, Travis, let's go back there because I want to make my point also. Here we go. Might increase the risk. So all I did when I started to notice, come back to you, Travis. All I did when I noticed that I started to go, there's some correlation. That when women were excessively pushed in their body, creating those high inflammatory markers, where well, I started doing young in my career going, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test those markers. And I even had some women come over after they're done intensely exercising and say, let me draw your blood, let me check some of your markers that way, and they're elevated. And I was going, all right, that's gonna take some response and some time and some hormones to start to repair and regenerate. And then you looked and you're going, oh my goodness, now we correlate, started to go, the hormone levels have started to go low. And even though they couldn't tell any disease See, that wonderful fitness lady doesn't correlate any disease yet just because she skips a cycle. Watch this. And I, and I put this out there before I even started this. If you have a daughter that's 15, 16, 17 years old, and she's in athletics, and she pushes her body hard, and she presents with no disease that they can measure yet, but she's skipping her cycle, do you consider your daughter to be healthy or not? The majority of doctors say, well, it's not that big a deal. It's very common. No, and guess what happens? You are starting to build illness and it's gonna be a bad day someday if that's not changed. See the concept that you have to show up and have a presentable disease to be unhealthy makes no sense. Makes no sense. Because I wish, I wish, and it doesn't work this way. Let's say all of a sudden that a soda took five minutes off the end of your life. Five minutes. I wish when you drink your soda, you die for five minutes. And then you come back. So you didn't end that, it didn't shorten your life. Didn't shorten your life. But what it did, it just took away from that meat. No one drinks soda. If something you did bad would take off the end of your life. Because the 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 horrible part about all this, especially if you're in your twenties, you think you're gonna live forever. Do you understand? There's one thing that all of us are going to come in contact with no matter what your religion is. <laughs> We're going to die. But some people, once again, live, but they really don't because they're sick. You know, 
when people are stuck in a nursing home and they can't move, they can't do stuff, they're suffering every day. Is that really living? It's hard to have a headache all day long and get through the day. Can you imagine what it's like if you have some more major illnesses? It's very difficult. So I want to show you something. So let's look at this here. So I started to look at the cycle and go, huh, huh, hmm. Tavis, let's go over here. This is, a, this is the female cycle, of course, in one month. And I started to go, you know something? Their progesterone levels are different. Their estradiol levels are different. Their testosterone levels are different. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, due to the changes in their hormones, which can lead to growth of tissue, reduction of tissue. For example, ladies, you know this. During certain levels of your estrogens, your breast tissue is bigger, your breast tissue is smaller. Your butt's bigger, your butt's smaller. And it happens every month. You understand? Because there's hormones that fluctuate and it's gonna change. Guys, we're pretty lucky. You know, we're pretty lucky. Our testosterone changes are very little, a little bit in the morning higher, a little less at night. But we stay pretty, uh, pretty secure through the month. We'll have a little cyclic changes, but not much. So the idea is this, I started to go, so a man's exercise routine can be, once again, very consistent. No, no, it can't be ladies. It can't be. And as a protector of your body, the doctors and all these people that are trying to, all these fitness people trying to tell you that you can exercise every single day intensely and create high inflammation and stuff like that, I'm going, are they just looking at the most basic things of female physiology? I just don't get it. I'm like, where are you coming to your conclusions? I'm cool if you have a conclusion different than mine, but then show me what you mean. So let's do this. So. I didn't realize that this chart was gonna be popular all over the world. And now I have fitness people reaching out to me saying, Doc, this stuff works. Okay, this stuff works. Travis, let's pop up just a slide for a second. So what I did, it's nothing more than our amazing graphic artists put my teachings into graphics to help women what to do on different times of their cycle. No joke, as you guys met Erin Walton, all she did was take all my information, put it in a book form, became an international bestseller. So my graphics team, we're gonna walk through week by week and give you some ideas of what you can do, ladies. And because the female cycle is very common to every woman, what happens week by week. Now, Duran, Travis, come back here on this. This is based on roughly a 28-day cycle. It could be 26, it could be 32. You can adapt to there. If you have a cycle that's lower than 26, or have a cycle that's more than 32, you need to get some hormonal balance back in. You do. There's some issues going on. And um, like, for example, I just talked to a woman and said, Doc, I menstruate every 36 to 40 days. Well, we need to get that balance back out because it's a little hard. You're not gonna really have, you know, eight or nine day workout periods that way. You gotta get that change on there. So there's some issues. So that's the one thing. So you gotta work on specific things, but let's do this. Let's see what we can do. Let's go around that circle. And as we see here, Exercise according to a woman's monthly cycle. Days one through seven. Now here's what happens. This literally, literally drives women nuts when I say this. Doc, it's so nice, I only, I only menstruate, I only have my period for three days, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That means you don't build up enough of the endometrial layer. That means you're not pushing enough tissue out. You could leave some tissue in there. It's a bad day. I like to see women menstruate and I know this sucks. Cause I'm a male, I don't know, I, I cut my finger, I'm bleeding, I'm all, I'm all wussed out on it, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, that's, where's my Band-Aid, okay? But the idea is this, so having this a period for five to seven days sucks. Ladies, I get it, I get it, it sucks. It really does. But my advice and my observations and my things are based on the best outcome of your health, okay? So let's take a look at it again. Day one through seven, five to seven days of menstruation, extremely careful with exercising. Okay, want to bring in oxygen to the muscles. You're saying you don't want to get very inflamed. Stretching, light yoga, walking. A lot of people forget how amazing uh, vibe plates are. Do you understand that I encourage this to everybody and you can buy them online. 
you can get the mayor. I, I, if it's just vibrational, I don't care what you do. You know, Sam, guys, ladies, stand on your uh, stand on your uh, dryer, do something that way, make something that vibrates. I don't care. You know, I think that's where it all came from, anyways. But anyways, uh, no, do me a favor. You know, get something that vibrates. All right, and um, because here's what happens: stand those vibe plates. Um, now remember, I will give you some basic um, research that I read on this. Um, do I have anything to prove it? Do I look in great detail? No. But they said being on a vibe plate for 20 minutes is like an hour's worth of exercise because it's motion. See, do not be sedentary. I'm against people being sedentary every single day. I'm against it. This vibe plates work extremely well for people that have joint problems, people that are elderly, because they can move their joint by doing what? By not even contracting everything. So there's ways of doing it. So people say, Doc, do you have a favorite vibe plate? No, just go look them up. I think, I think just any kind of movement, any kind of vibe is still good. It's why even mini trampolines worked. Because mini trampolines got really popular. You're just vibrating. It's a good thing. All right. So when you look at this, now let me, let me, let me so when you look at our, as we go around the circle here, as you look at this way, our first week, it's so important to stay active, move, but be careful on creating inflammation at time. Now, why? Because let's take a look. Your progesterone is tanked, it's supposed to be. Your estrogens are just starting to build up a little bit. This is your major, major anabolic. So this week, week one through seven, excuse me, days one through seven, ladies, take it easy. Now, I mean this sincerely. Ladies, look at me. Look at me on this. When you have your period, do you feel like going for a run? Now, let me give some of the, uh, let me give some of the counter arguments. Doc, it relieves my cramps. Well, you have cramps because you're sick. Cramping is not normal. You're hormonally deficient. There's problems. Your hormones are too low and you're cramping. So yes, you get some endorphins and other things produced by high intensity ex uh, exercise. So you feel a little bit better, but you are actually being counterproductive to what you're really trying to accomplish. See, so I I've heard all the arguments on this. Now, once again, so what you want to do is you want to move. You want to do things. You have to actually get the, the oxygen to the muscle. You want to. So keep blood flow going. But once again, that's why yoga and other practices that get your uh, body circling is a great thing. Stay active every day. So let me say it again. Be active every day. Just be careful on the intensity that you do during certain weeks. So day one through day seven, guess what happens? We want to actually keep that heart rate at a minimal, keep that intensity at a minimal, and be active every day, get circulatory things going. Once again, it's a wonderful thing to do. Week number two, roughly days seven through 14. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Easiest time to lose weight. Your body can handle the best stress during this week. Good time to do anything stressful to your body, it really is. And a lot of people do not realize this, as, those, as these anabolics continue to increase, you see here, it's a great part of week two. Now let's come here. As it starts to increase, actually even progesterone starts to come up, but guess what else starts to elevate during this time? Testosterone. Testosterone. Testosterone starts to elevate this time, which testosterone, ladies, for you, just like men, is it starts to build some tissue. You can build muscle during this time. Your testosterone is not that elevated during week one. So that's why you can feel stronger. You can take some things on. Your body is more in an anabolic, kind of a little bit of a dude state. You really can. And use that because then your testosterone is going to be used up, not your progesterone. See, so those are the things because testosterone starts to go up. And that's why we won't even talk about the emotional parts. That's why, once again, if you ever look at this way, each week there's a different physical thing you should be, but each week there's a different mental thing that happens. There is more aggression. Do you understand, ladies? You go from, ah, oh, doc, I'm, I have my period every day to, woo, I'm jacked up. I'm aggressive. Well, because hormonally, your body is shifting, and that's cool. The woman feels like they take on the world now. Go for it. Hit CrossFit. Go there. Intensity. They have a bunch of names for all their stuff, don't they? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's throw this up this way, and they call it this, and do it this way. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Hit the high intensity. Uh, uh, get that heart rate up. Sweat. 
go to go to your body shuts down. I'm cool with it. That week, I've seen great benefit that way, and happening that way. Okay, and, and no joke, you can actually have some mobilization of fat. But you know what's kind of funny? Here's the funny thing about it, ladies. Let me give you a little key though. Do you understand that even working intensely during that time, you'll still gain weight. You just won't gain as much. Do you know why? Because as your estrogens start to go up, that's when your breasts fill a little bit more, and so does your booty. But if you know that, you're not as frustrated because when you hit the other weeks, you're, you'll actually lose that weight. Do you understand that your body has to go up and down constantly, ladies? Us men don't, don't do that. If we go up, we're being lazy. Women's not that way. Their body's going to go up and down consistently through the month. So now, week three. Week three. Ah, this to me is where most women get sick. This to me is the time we go back to even I want things to be even less stressful in their life totally. Walking, vibe plate, stretch, yoga, keep your heart rate down. Be active, get things to circulate. Stay away from your stressors. This is the week right here, ladies. I beg you, as a protector, I have a wife, I have four daughters. I tell people, listen, I don't care. I have Aaron as my investigative journalist. I have staff members. I have wonderful, wonderful women in my, wife, in my life. And guess what happens? I'll be like, it's week three. I need you to chill out. But wait, Doc, I got so much work to do. Chill out. There's always work. See, as an owner of a big company, I understand this. I don't want the women in my life stressed out, especially during week three, because it can lead to some illness. Now, Doc, how can you say that? Well, let's just look at the hormone chart itself. Do you understand that your body has to produce it, and it will? See, the thing is this. As that egg grows, excuse me, I apologize. As that um, primordial follicle grows, releases estrogens, then the egg pops open, and then it changes to the corpus luteum, and that produces a lot of hormone. That's fantastic. That whole cycle happens that way. But what, what scares me, what scares me dramatically, and, and ladies, take this seriously, that progesterone is made to counteract a lot of those estrogens that have elevated and changed and, and grew this tissue right here, even grew your breast tissue. And now if that tanks, this breast tissue can continue to grow. So it scares me for breast cancer. But let's say, guess what happens? Let's say that you even had sex during the right time. And because you're aggressive and your testosterone up, you're all sex driven and you had sex. Doc, I nailed ovulation. No pun intended. Okay, I nailed ovulation. It's there. That was funny. I don't care who you are. Remember, you're watching my show. Okay, I'm still a guy. You nailed ovulation. But then progesterone is meant to maintain those sex characteristics of that uterine lining. But now progesterone goes too low because you're excessively exercising. You're excessively stressed out. And progesterone has to skyrocket. It's the highest time ever. It's the highest time ever. Let me say it again. It's the highest time ever. So ladies, I beg of you. I beg of you. Some of you ladies know when you ovulate, you can feel that release and that burst of the egg. You can see that milky discharge. Take it easy. But doc, I don't have, I don't have kids. It has nothing to do with children. It doesn't. It has all to do with that whole cycle because that progesterone does much more than help you maintain your lines so you can, get, so you can uh, implant on. It dictates every other part of your body to maintain some of those sex characteristics from other hormones. It helps you if all of a sudden you come in contact with a virus and you didn't know and you need to produce some cortisone and you have the available progesterone to help produce it. There's so many factors in your body that depend on that progesterone getting elevated. You need to let it get there. But you can't do it if you're constantly inflamed and draining your hormones out. You can't. That's why I'm like, take it easy, ladies, in all areas of life. Well, Doc, my life is stressful. I get it. No, do you understand? Women's life is hard. Men's life is hard. Life is hard. I get it. It's extremely hard. But you know who's less affected by the hardness of life? Men. Men. So all these soy boys complain that life is hard. Step up. Not only for yourself because you're useless if you don't step up. You're also useless for a woman that needs you. 
Oh, yeah. I know. Doc, that's masculine. Yeah. We need some masculine men to protect these women from, from getting sick. So I don't care if the soy boy points to his TikTok and says, look at the advice he's giving women and stuff. I'm like, yeah, let your mama tell you you're special. And as you're giving advice to these women as they're getting sick, I do believe in God. One day you'll be held accountable too. I want to be held accountable for what I'm saying because I know I'm right. And that makes all of you not masculine men actually sad that I said, I know I'm right. See, because confidence today, which is a testosterone thing, is frowned upon today. All right, Aaron, are you, are you attracted to a confident man or a weak soy boy? That sounds like a woman. Thank you. All you women are. Men, step up. Okay? And Durham, and if your mama says, don't say that things, say, Mom, you're a wonderful woman, but you're not a man. Time for you guys to act like them. So, take it easy, ladies, during that time. I beg of you. I beg of you. I beg of you. And I will never change this. I have not changed it from the day I recognized this in my early 20s. And I've proven it over and over and over again. And I proved it on labs. I prove it clinically. And guess what happens? And women have lived better lives because of it. Week number four. Days 21 through 28. Hit it hard again. Do it again. You know what I'm saying? Do it again. Because here's what happens. There's a couple of reasons. So if you look at the four weeks that come about that way, ladies, take a snapshot of this. Take a look at these things. These are the important things that you're going to see here. And the reason why it's important, so Travis, come back to me for a second. The reason why we're going to do this, we're going to come over to this chart right here. If you look in that week here, we want the hormones to drop. We want them. We want them to drop down. So then, therefore, once you get into that week, if you are not, not getting pregnant, guess what happens? You're going to drop down. That's okay because that's going to start that cycle all over again. See, that's why, like a woman says, this woman said, Doc, I, I menstruate every um, third or 36 to 40 days. I said, you know what happens to this? Once you get by day 21, I want you to exercise really hard. I do. Because I want her hormones to be drained out a little bit. Because I want to do those things that are going to push her by. I don't want her to mentally stress out. I want her to physically push her by a little bit. See if we can stimulate that circadian rhythm. Remember, we're just talking about exercise right now. And I said, you could even fast a little bit. Oh, wait, Doc, you just told a woman she could fast. Yeah, because we have to get that thing back normal. So there's times that you can be a little bit you know, aggressive with your foods, times you can be a little bit aggressive with your x-rays, or x-rays, exercise, and there's times you cannot. And guess what happens? It's cyclic for a woman. That's why they have cycles. Men, we are so lucky. We don't have those cycles that way. So when I put this chart together, all I was doing was trying to give an, an idea. And no joke, is when I explain it, and especially when I explain it to women, women go, oh my goodness, I'm gonna start adapting that. So I sent that exact graft to that wonderful 21-year-old certified fitness and strength coach. And I said, hey, listen, Two weeks out of the, out of the month, can, you hit it hard. Do your thing. Stay very active. Make sure you have circulation. Remember, it's fantastic to move every day just from, just think of this, guys. From an immune system standpoint, your lymphatics only contract when you move. That's why your immune system does better when you move. So that's why getting on a vibe plate, your, your lymph nodes, your lymph is in the midst of your waste product is circulating. It's fantastic. Do not be sedentary. I am constantly moving. I barely sit. I have to force myself to sit down. And people wonder why I have great labs and great immune system, high testosterone, everything that way we consider it high, but it's not really high. It's actually normal for 48. Why I didn't fear, you know, three years of uh, people getting scared of bugs. Because doing the right things. So, oh my goodness. That being said, we're already 20 minutes over our average nine o'clock. That's okay. Oh, take that chart, apply it to your life, leave comments, 
when I do extra shows on it that way, you'd be surprised. It's kind of funny. I made my favorite drink this morning. If you don't realize it's my favorite drink, you take a lemon, you take a lime, um, you take some broccoli sprouts, which I'll be teaching about next week sometime on one of my YouTube channels. Remember guys, remember this, go to YouTube. Um, I took that 11 things of course, all put into a, a seven minute video. Our wonderful team put it all together and just saw it, it looked amazing. Every week I'm going to be putting out different true educational ones. This is a whole show where I explain things. True short five, seven minute videos, but this is actually my favorite drink. What I do is this. So I take one lime, one lemon, because a lot of people don't realize. Does anybody understand the most important part of a lemon and a lime is not the juice. It's actually the pulp. It's actually the white part. So the peel and everything. Do you understand lemon peel, especially um, women that have dominant estrogen problems, is an aromatase inhibitor. Lemon peel is amazing. So that's why when people just squeeze lemon and get rid of the peel, I'm like, you just got rid of the best part. So I blend it up and then I throw broccoli sprouts because broccoli sprouts actually have 10 to 20 times more nutrients than broccoli itself. But on top of it, it doesn't have the phytic acid, it doesn't have the anti-nutrients. So I put broccoli sprouts in there. Then I put apple cider vinegar, which you guys know that's my favorite product on the planet by far. And I blend it up, drink it. So I sip on it. So it's kind of cool. So that's why you see me stirring it that way because some of the pulp will come to the top. And then guess what happens? Um, I'll sip on it. Now, if I am doing a little, if I want something sweet, I'll add a little stevia drop in there and to give it a little sweetness, but I just decided to double fist it. <laughs> one Zevia. Um, so I'll go back and forth, so see me drink this one, this one. But as you guys know, uh, Brandon and I and a bunch of our guys have been fasting for a while. So come on over, Brandon. We, um, yeah, bring it on over. Because as I said, Travis coming up, man. Okay. So like I said before, I'm gonna move over a little bit, give them a little space. But oh, there it is. I'm not showing you the brand of liver though, yeah. because yes, you are not knowing you know what it is from, because it. no joke, there's times that happen with all the organic farms and everything that I tell people where I got all my organic meat and the next thing you know, I went to the farm and they are sold out. I'm like, wait, I'm the one that told you all about it. Right. So here we go. Once again, Travis always behind the camera. There he is. And so it's kind of cool. So, oh, oh, look at this beauty. You guys ready? Yep. So Brandon and I haven't eaten for a long time. So here we go. It's, a, it's amazing. Um, so in this, Nigel Kai's. There's liver, there's heart, there's kidney, there's ground beef. And guess what happens? This is by far, I can prove you on a shout about, this is by far the most nutrient dense food on the planet. The best thing for you, there's nothing that compares. Cheers. Cheers. I have not done this in a while. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Mm -hmm. It tastes phenomenal. It tastes phenomenal. <laughs> I will tell you. Oh my goodness. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. Wow. Oh wow. That's that's beautiful to the lips and everything. So oh. Yep. The bioavailable nutrients in that liver, in the heart, and kidney, and ground beef is amazing. I get it from a grass finished farm. See a lot of things that people realize sometimes organic um, beef, they'll say grass fed. Um, and then what they'll do at the end, they'll plump it up with organic grains, including soy. So as I tell people, look for people that do grass finish to do it the whole time. Um, once again, next week, we're gonna start to cover the, the thyroid. Um, uh, we're gonna probably, I'm gonna probably do a couple shows. I'm gonna be gone a little bit next month because I have to, uh, I have to go to Hawaii. <laughs> Faith and Devin are getting married, so their wedding's in Hawaii. Also, I have to thank you guys. I got a couple of announcements before we end today. Um, because of our videos going viral all over the world, because of our amazing team and our amazing journalists and all the people that work downstairs, one day I think I'm gonna have to just do a show um, where you guys get to see just all these people. We had a huge expansion just open up. We have more offices open up all over the world, but it gives me an opportunity to share my ideas because it makes sense to a lot of people. Uh, from fasting to exercise, and I get to go down to Phoenix and be on a Turning Point show. So I'm excited about that. Um, and once again, hopefully, you know, it, they'll probably do extremely well. And uh, there'll be people that are going to love it. And there'll be soy boys that hate it. And that's okay. Remember, there's love and hate constantly. Uh, but then also, the cool thing is this. Um, I've been talking to my team a lot about this. Just like what happened yesterday. Uh, the crowd seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I took some time off to speak. And 
it was a good time. It was, um, I can honestly tell you, last year was definitely quite a year. Um, there were some things that were life-changing every single way. There's things that were extremely happy and extremely painful. You know what I'm saying? But once again, there's always that in life. But you know what's really funny? I always tell people, I like when people doubt me. I really do. I can honestly tell you, I thrive off it. See, you know, my whole life people doubted me. So if you've been doubted, here's what happens. The only way that those people win is if you doubt yourself. Don't doubt yourself. You'd be surprised what you can accomplish if you don't doubt yourself. See, especially in the male, guys, I'm telling you right now, be confident. Be confident. It's the one thing that does separate us from women. Testosterone by nature makes us confident. But you can, somebody can beat that down too. Don't listen to other people. Don't have doubt in yourself. And the cool thing is this. Um, I realized after watching everybody's comments and, and the messages I get that way, that um, I can honestly tell you, I've had thousands and thousands of messages asking me to bring the Hormone Connection Seminar back. And because I retired it last year. Well, here's what happens. I'm not bringing that seminar back because I, what I learned being a business person that the majority of people that showed up were women because men didn't understand how much hormones affect them. But the men that came were very thankful and they actually even sometimes liked it more than their wives did. But you know what's really funny? Um, I've been saying this my whole life since I was 13. Somebody would say, a woman has to exercise this way. It's good for a woman to exercise every single day. And I'd say, I disagree. A woman, a woman you know, can, can fast. I'd look and say, I disagree. Um, this woman can't have a baby. I disagree. This cancer can't be reversed. I disagree. It seems like a common phrase that I say all the time. But then here's the difference compared to the soy boys. Here's the difference between somebody that can just have a, an account and put up a TikTok and disagree with you. I went on and proved everybody wrong. I proved the people, counselors in school when I was in middle school and high school, said I'd become nothing. Now guess what? Now they, it's really funny, now they tell stories about when they met me and they knew me as a kid. Guess what happens? In college, when I said this is what I was going to do, people said, never happened. See, the cool thing is this. All those things I went out and proved it. Well, so what I'm going to do starting in May, talk to my team, talk to my family, talk to everybody. We're going to start speaking. And believe it or not, here's going to be the name of the seminar. I disagree. Because you know why? Aaron and I sat down this past week and said, it's time to bring out a second edition of an international best-selling book. And as I did yesterday, yesterday was a little bit of a test. I took the immune stuff, which once again is one of my backgrounds, and I taught just on the immune system and blew them away. Because you know why? How I present information, I work very hard. I was here at 5 a.m. starting to prepare for you guys to explain a topic that most people may disagree with. But then at the end of the people go, that, I'm watching the comments right now as you guys are posting and said, man, that makes so much sense. It does because I work really hard on my communication. So we're going to bring back our seminar. We're going to start scheduling it on offices across the country. So when I get back from Hawaii, um, you're going to see us advertising for them. I'm going to probably do 20, 25 talks from May to probably the first week of June and go and just do a quick tour, take the summer off so, so we can golf a lot. <laughs> so we can spend time, you know, because it's a very short season we get here in Wisconsin. Um, and then I'm going to be back. There's certain things I'll do in the fall just because uh, Trinity will have volleyball, and I don't want to miss that. Uh, she'll be a senior this year. I can't believe that I have two older daughters. I have, <laughs> one's getting married, you know what I'm saying? I forget, when you start to get to your 40s, that happens to your kids, you know? Because I've got some of these docs that are in their 20s, I still feel like them. Still feel like them. Brands in his 20s, I still feel like him. Even though I still remember, I was standing there and I heard Brands first scream, first cry. Man, and now he's 29, married, supposed to have a baby any day. Isn't that crazy how time goes by so quickly. But time doesn't have to go by quickly enough to suffer. You know what I'm saying? You can be very healthy, very vibrant, and go 100 miles an hour, even at 48 years old. But that what happens is this. Take that confidence, 
take people's doubt in you and prove them wrong. Let me tell you, I'll tell you from doing it my whole life, it's so fun rubbing it in their face. People say, be kind. I don't want to be kind. I'm going to be kind by crushing them with the success that I'm going to have because I'm doing good things. So that's the fun part about it as we talk about this stuff. And uh, as guess what happens? So all you guys, I know I'm, I'm watching your comments right now. Guess what happens? Get some of that confidence back. The world's going to tell you not to. That actually hurts your hormone levels. Go out there, crush the world. You can do it. I promise you. And if you have any questions, send me a message. I'll always respond. All right, guys. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Thank you so much for watching A Different Perspective today. You guys have an awesome day. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources.